I am Andrew Ryan, and I'm here to ask you a question. Is a man not entitled to the sweat of his brow? No, says the man in Washington, it belongs to the poor. No, says the man in the Vatican, it belongs to God. No, says the man in Moscow, it belongs to everyone. I rejected those answers. Instead, I chose something different. I chose the impossible. I chose rapture. Bioshock is one of my favorite games of all time. The environment, its atmosphere, and the characters, just everything about it was so incredible. I remember watching some friends back in middle school playing it when we were all hanging out. I wasn't even really allowed to play in most M games until I was out of the house. I don't even remember if it was the first or second Bioshock, or what they were even doing in it, but I remember so vividly that it was Bioshock. I was so immersed in it, and I wasn't even playing the game. I never did get to play it that night but I was finally able to play it in high school when I had a mid-range laptop with an NVIDIA 540 m in it. I actually overclocked that thing, and I'm surprised I didn't break it. I remember it only taking a few short nights to see the credits, and the ending had captivated my thoughts for days afterwards. Have you ever had a game or a movie or a book, or just anything that completely blew your mind and the only thing you could do is dissect every little detail by either searching forums about other people's experiences or telling your friends until they're sick of you? This was one of those games for me. Youth Pastor Alex here again with another church box. Looking back and playing Bioshock again has been an absolute blast. What surprised me about this church box is that I thought the ESRB rating would be the main aspect, but it's actually about its philosophy and storytelling. You could say I was Bioshocked. <laughs> here are the five ratings that I might give it. Let's take a dive. Shut up! First off, the violence. This game is actually pretty violent, and I'd say in some areas it's more violent than Grand Theft Auto of all things. This game also features a lot of violent imagery with corpses that add to the creepy atmosphere. This game really gives off a God left me unfinished kind of vibe. So if creepy violence or atmosphere makes you uneasy, then it's best to avoid this one and play Grand Theft Auto instead. After all, some sins are worse than others. <laughs> Apparently there are sexual themes in this game though. I didn't catch any sexual themes unless you count the splicer that says you just got your cherry popped when you had your first plasmid. But to me that doesn't make any sense. Oh. And now for the philosophy part. The summary of Ayn Rand and Bioshock is about objectivism, the belief that society will benefit as a whole if everyone focuses on themselves instead of putting others first. Andrew Ryan, the creator of Rapture, believed that we have to strip all the constraints, whether earthly or heavenly, to achieve true greatness. However, humanity is a parasite and will always corrupt even the purest of intentions. Andrew Ryan became paranoid and clung to his power causing him to lose his vision on true objectivism and contributed to the fall of Rapture. It wasn't objectivism that caused this, it was its abandonment. I mention this because Ryan believed that abandoning everything, including God, was a secret to achieving greatness. But it's also not that the game is promoting Christianity by having Ryan and his underwater city become Atlantis II, Electric Boogaloo, but more is about the folly of man in a general sense. We're always destined to fail if we only focus on ourselves. The religious symbolism in this game is more or less just an aspect of the storytelling, not a criticism of Christianity or any religion. The game actually contains a large amount of Christian references. Adam and Eve is a subtle name for the source of powers that you obtain in Bioshock. There's also a type of splicer called a waiter. And even though that they're just as insane, they'll say things like this. Traded you, O Lord, for mammon. And what did it get me, huh? Father, why have you forsaken me? I'm sorry, Father. I'll do what you say, I, I'll do what you say. Even Miles underwater, he still sees everything. Sees everything, sees everything, sees everything, sees everything. He's kind of basically saying that this was all a mistake and you cannot hide from God. There are also these giant creatures called Big Daddies that are in charge of protecting little sisters. The little sisters are atom factories and there's a morality system where if you save them, you'll get a little bit of atom, but you'll get more if you harvest them. I didn't realize this until I researched it and I'm not entirely sure, but since little sisters are being forced to produce atom, it's as if they're being forced to sin, which would contribute to the damnation of rapture. So Ken Levine, if this is intentional, this was 
really, really good. Ken Levine is also openly an atheist, but this game has way too much thought and care put into it that I really can't say whether he dislikes Christianity or that this game is anti-Christian. Obviously, I could be wrong about all of this, but he even sought assistance from a Christian gaming developer when he was working on Bioshock Infinite's Christian cult-like setting. This game certainly is controversial, but a deeper look into this game shows an abandonment of not just God, but anything meaningful in this world. A man deserting everything to create a utopia in which the entire foundation is based solely on selfishness really doesn't seem anti-Christian. However, a valid criticism may be that the references of Christianity in this could be a little inappropriate, but to me they are simply just part of the subjective and creative storytelling. So the rating that I give this game is going to be a pre after play, but you go to hell before you die if you harvest the little sisters. You might be wondering why I gave Bioshock a prey after play when I gave Grand Theft Auto a hell before you die when I said Bioshock is a bit more violent. This is where I wanted to bring up the game's intention. Bioshock's Rapture is a ruined underwater city plagued with rampant superpower drug abuse. The game is very violent and it gives you the choice to be even more evil if you decide to harvest little sisters. But I believe that is for the story and the game would not be the same without it. The game actually doesn't endorse drug and alcohol abuse. You lose health if you drink too much or smoke cigarettes that are lying around. Splicers are the atom addicts who have lost their minds to it. The game is actually telling you that these things are bad. While I believe Grand Theft Auto isn't some evil murder or crime simulator to promote the activities for the real world, the game does promote the non-murdery aspect and encourages and rewards you for doing so. To me, context matters more than the content, and that's why I think Bioshock isn't as bad. So I hope you guys really enjoyed that video. I had a blast making it as well. I'm planning on doing Bioshock Infinite eventually, not right away, but soon. I hope you guys really enjoy this segment. This is so much fun. I hope you guys stick around, and I'll see you guys later.